Hey guys, it's Charlie on The Pagan Perspective. Today's topic is resources. So I thought that it would be a great idea to share my resources on my Kindle as a pagan because I'm a traveling pagan and I don't carry around a whole bunch of books. <laughs> so I thought I would share with you guys what is on my Kindle. I do also take a lot of resources from the internet and usually it's just through a lot of just Google searches. Today I just mainly want to share what is on my Kindle. I got this Kindle a few years ago from... Whoop, Oops. <laughs> I got this Kindle a few years ago. My brother gave me some Target gift card or something like that. And I decided to buy a Kindle because a Kindle is so good. Like I know that a lot of people want to be able to crack open a book and turn the pages. And I really do miss that a lot when I'm using my Kindle, but I can't explain and stress enough how valuable having something electronic is when you're traveling. You can carry so many books on this little thing without carrying it all on your back. <laughs> so if any of you are travelers and wanting to find more pagan resources um, and books and read more, but you want to travel as well, I definitely recommend you picking up a Kindle because this thing is a big part of my pagan practice, which is kind of interesting because it's an electronic device. But I do a lot of reading on this and I love that I can carry so many books. So when I open up my Kindle um, and turn it on, my home screen shows a few different things. The first thing it shows is that I have a problem with my credit card on file. <laughs> I definitely need to take care of that. But the other thing that I can see is the different books that I have. And the first one that I see is the current book that I'm reading and it is called Hand Fasting and Wedding Rituals. Welcoming Hera's Blessing. And I also mentioned this in a past video. It's a book that I'm reading right now. It's on pagan hand fasting and wedding rituals. They talk about a lot of different things that you can do in pagan rituals if you have a group that is coming who is not inclined or you know supportive of paganism. Um, you can have a little bit more rituals that are not so obvious. And then there's also recommendations for those who people who are coming to your wedding who are pagan or something like that you know so it's very adaptive to your situation and that's what I'm reading right now I haven't read it in a few days but I will be getting back to that <laughs> oh the other great thing about this book the uh, one of the authors for this book is transgendered so I thought that was really cool I didn't know it when I bought it but after I bought it and read the book I realized that <laughs> the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz because it is such a good book for your everyday life and that is one of the books that I consider a pagan book on my Kindle. Moon Time, A Guide to Celebrating Your Menstrual Cycle. I love this book and the reason I like it is because it's something that we don't really talk about enough about celebrating a natural cycle that women go through. There are a decent amount of people who incorporate their menstrual cycle into their practice but I think it's not something that's really talked about you know too often within our community but I have been trying to focus more on being more aware during my menstrual cycle every part of your month is a menstrual cycle technically but anyway <laughs> during that time of the month I really try and pay close attention to my energy and where I'm putting my energy how I'm using that energy and all of that. So definitely a great book. Another book that I have and the last book that is currently on my first page of my Kindle is Palmistry for All. And I think this was a really short book. I have been into palmistry for a while. It really sparked when I was in Mexico and I got my palm read and it was really accurate. And I really wanted to take palmistry lessons there but I didn't have time, so I decided to make time while I was riding the subway. <laughs> okay, on the next page of my Kindle, I have 
the witch cult in western europe a study in anthropology i think this is a very good book if you're looking to find a little bit more history and i guess kind of stories also if you're into anthropology it's also a great book i'm not really into anthropology but it allowed me to delve a little bit deeper into history of witchcraft and i'm not really a big history person but you know sometimes you just gotta learn <laughs> the simple sabbat and this one is by flora peterson she's also here on youtube and many of you probably already follow her and yeah it's an approach to the eight pagan holidays and it's pretty much supposed to be a simplified version it's supposed to help you find some sort of structure within your sabbat practice so if you guys are trying to find a little bit more structure i think this is great i took a lot of what she recommended and made it my own a lot of what she has is for family for example and i'm not in a family that is practicing paganism together so or at all <laughs> so i took what she had that worked for me and i used it and adapted it for myself. The Sacred Wheel, a guide to the pagan year for beginners in witchcraft and Wicca. The Sacred Wheel is great for those of you who are trying to learn more about the Wheel of the Year. It's definitely not as exciting if I have this on my Kindle. Usually it looks a lot better and it's more fun if I have the actual book, the physical book with me to show you and open up but travelers have to do it some kind of way and this is how we do it <laughs> earth magic this one is considered a book of shadows for positive witches <laughs> i don't remember what this book is about but it's on here and i'm pretty sure i read it but um, a lot of books to me a lot of pagan books are very boring and i think i just haven't found the one that is just perfect for me i feel like i tend to find myself skimming through a lot of them i feel like a lot of them are written and not something that i need at the time in my life that i'm reading it so i tend to just skip through a lot of chapters and pages because i feel like it's just not what i need in my life at the moment skim through some of them because some chapters might be interesting to you at the time and other chapters you're just never going to read and that's okay usually most books have something in them that you can learn from um, but maybe not every single chapter is for you at the time <laughs> and I find that with a lot of pagan books and it's unfortunate because I end up getting books and just skimming through them so if you guys have any books that you would like to recommend me read and you think that would be good I would love to read them a lot of things um, that have lists of things that you can do like rituals and spells I really just skim through them I like to read books about like for example the four agreements where it talks about um, ways to pretty much improve your life and things like that I really like things like that but things where it lists stuff out I really just skim through and it's kind of frustrating my stomach just growled <laughs> I just ate a whole pizza you shouldn't be growling circle of fire a practical guide to the symbolism and practices of modern witchcraft so if you're interested in symbolism within witchcraft then i recommend you check that out the next one is a very popular one and this one is what do you think buckland's complete book of witchcraft and i have skimmed through this book a lot not that i have read every single page like i said before popular book among pagans so you guys probably have heard of this already and i don't even need to talk about it anymore <laughs> Solitary Wicca for Life, The Complete Guide to Mastering the Craft on Your Own. And I like a lot of solitary Wicca books or solitary witch books because I'm a solitary witch, so might as well read all the solitary witches books I can find. The Ethical Eclectic. And this is pretty much about being an eclectic while at the same time being ethical. A lot of times we take from a specific religion or belief system and we don't really appreciate what we are taking from. So this is a great book for those of you who want to learn more about being an ethical eclectic. A Year in a Day by Timothy Roderick. And this is a very popular book 
for those who are beginners so I'm pretty sure you've heard of it I actually used this book um, a lot in the beginning of my practice it was one of the first books that I went through Magical Chance by Lady Jeanne and sometimes it's nice to see what other chants people have created and kind of recreate these chants for yourself so you don't have to take a chant and say that chant exactly how the person wrote it but if you need some inspiration you can actually find a lot of inspiration from pre-written chants and even pre-written spells for example if you're writing out a spell or trying to write a chant and you need more inspiration on different types of words you can use if you have a chant book you can definitely go through some of the chants and find a lot of inspiration from some of the words that they chose and if you feel inspired by one of the words that they chose you can use it in your spell or chant i also have wicca Power Spells by Aurora Reed and this also goes along with what I just said. I don't use spells from books. I usually just take inspiration on how they did the spell or some words that they use that kind of inspire me or get me thinking. Um, so I definitely think that it's nice to have some spell books and things like that on your Kindle but I don't think it's necessary to use them exactly the way they're written. The next one is a Scott Cunningham book and it is Wicca, A Guide for the Solitary Practitioner and this is a very common book and it probably needs no explanation at all. <laughs> the Superstitions of Witchcraft. Next, because I do consider myself a kitchen witch, so my video cut out and I'm not sure how much got filmed but all of the book titles will be in the description box if I missed any. The next one that I have is Ethics Wicca 101 and this one is by Kathy Sybil. The next one is A History of Witchcraft by Wallace Notestein and this one is A History of Witchcraft in England from 1558 to 1718 so very specific <laughs> next is the shadow witch and on the last page of my kindle currently is the truth about wicca and witchcraft finding your true power by james atten so i hope that these books come of help to you if you found some books that you haven't heard of or never thought about purchasing books for Kindle. I definitely recommend it if you're someone who's always on the go and you're traveling a lot or you want to travel in the future. A Kindle is a definite great way to put all of your resources in one bunch and you can also put PDF files onto it as well. Uh, if you have any like short stories or things like that on PDF, you can download them and put them on here. I just wanted to share that with you guys to let you know that it is okay to have all of your resources on a Kindle. I actually have some books, like physical books, at my mom's house. But when I went to visit her, she claimed that she couldn't find them anymore. So I don't know if she threw them away or what happened to them, <laughs> unfortunately. I really hope this helps some of you guys. Comment below on what is on your Kindle. I really want to know. And if you have any book recommendations for someone like me who skims through a lot of pagan books because she feels like None of them really fit the situation she's in right now. If you have any book recommendations, feel free to comment them below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!